Anybody want to listen to Christmas music? I just want to listen to music. Hello, it's Dr. Matthew Andrews. This procedure is a lapidus procedure with Aiken osteotomy for correction of severe hallux valgus deformity and increased intermetatarsal angle. Uh, we jump right into the procedure here. Uh, we're dissecting. We have our incision over the medial foot. Uh, you want to sort of split the difference uh, between the tibialis anterior tendon and the extensor hallucis longus tendon as it co courses over the first metatarsal cuneiform joint. We use an extensive uh, medial approach where we expose uh, through one skin incision the entire surgical site, including the first metatarsal phalangeal joint and proximal phalanx for our Aiken osteotomy. With this surgical approach, uh, we do leave an island of uh, periosteum uh, centrally. So we do not uh, dissect all the way down uh, to bone uh, through the length of the incision. Let rate check, please. Mm -hmm. Good exposure here. I think it's a 25 gauge needle, actually. So here we are dissecting uh, our capsular and periosteal mm -hmm. tissue uh, from the joint. When you have the significant arthrosis of this yeah. joint, particularly dorsally, which happens in patients with cavus feet or midfoot jamming uh, pathologies, this can be a little bit of a difficult exposure. So once we have our periosteum freed and we have our joint exposed, and we're prepping for removal of the cartilaginous surfaces. We use a freer elevator here. Here we are identifying the joint. And we place the freer elevator along the course of the second metatarsal. Um, so we can use it as a guide with our saw uh, placed perpendicularly uh, to the second metatarsal. That's not too safe. No, that should be fine. Our first osteotomy cut is perpendicular to the long axis of the first metatarsal. Uh, this is a very thin slice of bone meant to uh, remove the uh, subchondral plate from the base of the first metatarsal. We make our second cut in the medial cuneiform, and we do this cut at an angle, therefore exacting our intermetatarsal correction uh, once the uh, cut surfaces of the bone are opposed. I can look down, I can look at the shaft of the metatarsal also. <coughs> so. Yeah. So here we are utilizing uh, a freer elevator. You may also use an osteotome uh, or other uh, instrument to free up the uh, cut surfaces of bone. Uh, the most difficulty with this procedure, uh, as you can see here, is typically with the plantar lateral aspect of the base of the first metatarsal. This is the insertion of the perineus longus tendon on the plantar uh, lateral aspect of the metatarsal. And it's typically the most uh, difficult part uh, of the bone to uh, remove. In our case, this is our lucky day, and we're able to move, remove most of the, most of the bone fragments uh, without too much difficulty. Plantar lateral first metatarsal, what is that? Lauren, well, that's the best cut I've seen yet from a resident. So you see these little white fibers down there? No. They're down there, plantar lateral. Plantar lateral first metatarsal. I see yellow through your metatarsal. So this is second metatarsal that you gouge a little bit over here. In many cases, a uh, re retractor placed against the uh, bone surfaces may be necessary to retract uh, the bone for uh, fenestration and preparation of the joint surfaces. However, in this case, our cuts were sufficient and we were able to uh, utilize a trocar tipped wire in this case to fenestrate the bone in preparation for fusion. So here we are with uh, pinning of the bony surfaces with the foot held in an appropriate position. Um, with one pin, you have very poor uh, rotational stability, so we're actually putting a second pin, plantar medial, uh, as provisional fixation for our fusion site. This layer, that's right here. So what you want to do, we can just make a small little bit right here and then be able to pull this up. 
I'm gonna sweep underneath it. To just get this stuff out of the way. I'll let you do this on the other side. So sweep your mural basket and stay under. The Meditech is not the most user-friendly interface either. While we're waiting for our C-arm, uh, which is in use in an adjacent OR, uh, we are actually making our uh, distal first metatarsophalangeal joint uh, dissection in this case. So we have the joint exposed, and here we are utilizing a maglamry elevator okay. to free the sesamoids and plantar mm -hmm. ligamentous attachments um, for uh, facilitation of correction uh, of our bunion deformity. Here we are removing the medial eminence, taking great care to preserve the plantar sagittal groove and not stake the head. Well, that right there takes care of most of your problem. Our C arm has arrived from the adjacent OR. So we take a look at our provisional fixation and we've determined here that we need to uh, obtain a little bit of additional correction. So here we are uh, increasing the size of the wedge cut from the uh, medial cuneiform with the base lateral. And here we are uh, teasing that fragment out, utilizing a sharp and blunt dissection. You can do it, it's fine. I, I live in this area. Oh, oh, yeah, I, uh, push. Usually we treat uh, push more. those three first steps are right. This one, doctor, is angry, the patient has enough. So we're checking again under C-arm to ensure that our revised uh, provisional fixation and intermetatarsal correction is adequate. Once we have determined it to be so, uh, we place the template plate for the Anchorage CP uh, plate. The template plate has a small tab located where my index finger on my right hand is that is placed into the joint and this allows for accurate facilitation of plate placement and placement of the uh, reaming wire which is being placed here. All right, reamer. The cannulated reamer has a hard stop so we ream into the uh, proximal first metatarsal and it's very difficult to over ream in this case uh, the reaming is done uh, to provide a pilot hole for uh, the divot into plate, which allows for uh, placement of the interfragmentary screw, uh, which will be performed later in the procedure. For your elevator? Yes, sir. Oh, no. she that's, oh, that's plenty. Good, yeah, Laura. Good, Laura. Good, Laura. Matt, do yes, I have to switch now to anything? Yeah. Can I flush yep. that? To put that little bit back. Can I have a flush that? Right, do not. Do, yeah, look what he does. Oh, you have to put it. Enough. You sure it says flush in there? Or you may need to ream a little bit more, so. So the plate we have chosen is the Anchorage CP plate, and you can see uh, the uh, divot in the plate is placed into the pilot hole that we've already drilled. These plates come with a variety of step-offs, and we've uh, chosen uh, a step-off of one millimeter. Uh, the step-offs are in millimeter increments, which allow uh, facilitation of placement of the plate directly against the bony surfaces. So we're using a Ron Jewer to additionally prepare the surface, and once we have the plate in place, uh, we will provisionally secure it uh, with an olive wire as shown here. Because I don't want to throw away stuff. Is it exactly just all the cables? Yep. All the cables you got there. We're still going to use. These are locking screws. Do you need, need to go by cortical? Like no. Go ahead. Coaxial drill towers are placed into the holes of the plate. And uh, these are 3 5 plate screws. So we throw our distal screws first, use, utilizing proper AO technique. So we drill the hole, measure, and then place the appropriate screw. These will typically be uh, between 14 and 18 millimeters in the first metatarsal. Is this screwdriver uh, and then for you too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it sits right in. This uh, drill sleeve is used for the freehand screw. It sits directly into the divot uh, in the plate and has a U-shaped cutout uh, so it contacts the plate at a particular angle. This is uh, freehand driven, which we perform under C-arm as well, so we know uh, proper depth of uh, the drill. This is the compression screw uh, interdigitated with the plate uh, that will exact uh, compression across your uh, fusion site.
done with that. This is going to be about it's going to be, be about a forty. That's what we do. You can, you can actually look at where your butt gauge is. We also measured the screw under C arm. In this case, we have chosen a thirty-six millimeter screw, which we are advancing uh, into the plate. As the screw contacts the plate, we pull uh, the provisional fixation wire and then tighten the screw down uh, to exact axial compression across our fusion site. Lock it down. There we go. See that thing closed down? Look at that thing closed down. No, not that, not that. We then throw proximal locking screws into the uh, medial cuneiform, utilizing the uh, coaxial guide again for our three, five screws. Once all the plate holes are filled with screws, uh, we again visually inspect under C-arm to ensure that our reduction is adequate. So good IM correction. We are additionally uh, preparing the joint here, uh, removing dorsal and medial osteophytes and we will also use a rasp uh, as well. So here we are uh, completing our dissection of the proximal phalanx uh, for preparation of the Aiken osteotomy. I think that was... We make our first cut for the Aiken and the proximal phalanx just distal to the proximal flare and the first cut will be perpendicular to the long axis of the joint or roughly parallel uh, with the first metatarsophalangeal joint surfaces. The second cut is made at a slightly oblique angle, uh, creating a wedge with the base medial. Uh, take it one, two. <clears throat> Once we dissect out our wedge fragment, which often also comes out in pieces, uh, a saw can be used again to gently feather uh, the surfaces to uh, oppose the cut surfaces of the bone, thereby completing the Aiken procedure. This is a drill guide for an eight millimeter staple. The drill has a hard stop on it, and this is only unicortical. Uh, there is uh, no need to go bicortical uh, with this drill in the proximal phalanx. So a pin is also placed here, because soft tissue interposition can be a problem when you attempt to find your holes for placement of the staple. This is an eight millimeter staple, which is placed directly into the created holes, and the tab is popped, thereby releasing the staple. Okay, I'll give you we just have to close them. Here. Are we in the hole? Here, here, man. Beat that thing. Down. Okay, good, it actually went down. Yeah. The, every time. The staple is tamped into place, and we irrigate our surgical site, and here we are uh, performing layered closure. We begin with our uh, deep layer. So the capsular and periosteal uh, tissues are opposed utilizing uh, 3-O Vicryl, and in this case we're using a running suture technique, ensuring that we cover all of our uh, buried hardware deep. So as you can see with our uh, running suture technique, we're able to uh, get excellent closure of the deep tissue uh, over the plate. We utilize 4-O Vicryl to approximate the deep subcutaneous tissue, and then 5-O Vicryl for the skin, and then place the patient in the cast.